Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that's not too loud. It is Wednesday, February 27th. It is 3 p.m. and I'd like to call to order um, the, uh, the public hearing <clears throat> on the uh, Orange County Comprehensive Plan. At this time, would you please silence all cell phones and electronic devices? I'd ask that we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of quiet reflection. Good afternoon. Would the clerk please read the public hearing notice? Notice of public hearings, County of Orange. Public notice is hereby given that the legislature of the County of Orange will meet at the SUNY Orange Newburgh campus on the 27th day of February 2019 at 3 o'clock p.m. on that day to hold the first of two public hearings to receive public comment on the proposed adoption of updates to the County Comprehensive Plan. The legislature of the County of Orange will also meet at the legislative chambers in the Orange County Government Center 255 Main Street, Goshen, New York, 10924, on the 20th day of March, 2019, at 5 o'clock p.m. On that day, to hold a public hearing to receive public comment on the proposed adoption of updates to the County Comprehensive Plan. The originally scheduled public hearing on the 20th day of February, 2019, at 5 o'clock p.m. in the Legislative Chamber, 255 Main Street, Goshen, New York, 10924, was rescheduled due to inclement weather and will be held on March 20th at 5 o'clock p.m. This notice was published in the February 8th and March 1st <coughs> issues of the Orange County Post, Strauss Newspapers, Warwick Advertiser, Photo News, News of the Highlands, the Formal Local, and the Gazette. The February 13th and February 27th issue of the Hudson Valley Press, Times Community Newspapers, Walk Hill Valley and Mid-Hudson Times, and the Warwick Valley Dispatch. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Tom Faggio. I'm the chairman of the Rules, Enactments, and Intergovernmental Relations Committee. And I'm a legislator for the 13th district representing the city of Port Jervis, the town of Deer Park, and the town of Mount Hope. I welcome you to the official public hearing on the amendments to the 2019 Orange County Comprehensive Plan. The legislature wanted to bring this public hearing to the people, so we are holding one public hearing in two different locations. This public hearing is in the SUNY Orange Newburgh campus. This will conclude, uh, this will continue and conclude at the legislative chamber 255 Main Street in Goshen. And this, as this is one public hearing, each person will only be allowed to speak once. Anyone wishing to speak, please sign up with the legislative office staff. And when your name is called, please come to the, instead of podium, please come to the microphone where you'll uh, give your name and town where you reside for the record. There will be a three minute limit for all speakers. We will gladly accept all written comments. Please hand them to the clerk's staff and as amended, uh, we discussed today, we will accept written comments until uh, the end of March, March 31st. That being said, I'd like to introduce some of the legislators who have joined me here today. I'll start on my, on my right, we have Legislator Janet Sutherland. Next to me, we have Legislator Lori Twatel. Legislator Kevin Durian Lujan. Lujan, I'm sorry, I always get that wrong. And next to him is uh, Legislator James Kulasek. We have Legislator Joe Menuda. Who else is down there? Oh, and, with, and we have our Majority Leader, and that's Legislator Katie Benelli. Thank you all for being here today. I would also like to introduce from the County Exec's Office, uh, Acting County Executive Harry Ford. At this time, I would like to introduce David Church, Orange County Commissioner of Planning, to give us a short summary on the proposed amendments to the Comprehensive Plan. Commissioner Church. Uh, thank you and thank everyone for attending. Um, the, the work uh, we're presenting uh, in draft form for the public hearings and consideration of the legislature uh, has been done consistent with the uh, county charter as well as New York State general municipal law. The county charter expressly states that uh, my position is planning commissioner. I'm re required to make a recommendation on the, on the updating of the county comprehensive plan at a minimum every five years. Um, and as I'll explain in a moment, we're, uh, we're close to the five years. 
the last time we updated that. Uh, this, the products being considered now in draft form are a work done by staff uh, working with the County Planning Board. I'm joined by Megan Tennerman, who's the staff planner of the work on the project. Uh, we also have the chairwoman of the County Planning Board, Elaine McClong, in the second row here. Anyone else yet, Elaine, from the Planning Board? I don't Not yet. Okay. Um, uh, so they've collaborated on that. Um, noting also on file with the, the draft documents uh, is a completed uh, environmental assessment form for compliance with the State Environmental Quality Review Act is required um, for adoption of any plan by a local government in New York State, and that can be reviewed in our office as is necessary. It's been submitted to the county legislature. Um, most of the work is uh, actually an outcome of uh, a tool we use called Co-Urbanize. It's a, it's a digital uh, sourcing tool that, where we solicited input and thoughts on uh, what kind of shape the county plan was in and what might up, what, what updates might need to be done. Um, a significant portion of the some eight or 900 comments we received while we were using that tool uh, so were associated with transportation. So uh, that drove uh, one of the reasons why the, the, the majority of the proposed amendments are focused on a new first ever chapter for the county comprehensive plan uh, specific to transportation issues. Um, as an update on public outreach, including that tool, Co-Urbanize, we use, um, there have been articles in the, in the Times Herald record. Um, the public hearings have been noted. Uh, the planning board itself held one public hearing as required by state general municipal law prior to submission, uh, my submission of the draft to the county legislature and executive office. Um, uh, that hearing was held uh, late last year, um, and we factored in that information. Um, we've worked, collaborated with SUNY Orange, the County Planning Federation, and others, uh, and we've shared the document and its availability uh, with all municipalities and all municipal officials we could get a hold of. We now have printed copies in all libraries in the county, uh, as well as a, a set of copies in circulation through the Ramapo County Library Association. Um, uh, there's postings on the county website and Facebook page. Um, and we've done additional outreach to what lists uh, we could get a hold of and we made a specific outreach at the quest of the legislature to, to uh, senior to the senior organizations um, uh, to solicit any input there. Um, here in Newburgh, there is a hard copy in City Hall. Uh, um, and, and going forward, there is after today one more public hearing that's rescheduled as noted uh, due to weather. Um, and as noted, Written comments are welcome. They're actually uh, better for us than verbal comments, so we can mull them over. Uh, so we do request today, if you if you do say something verbally, if you have it in writing, it would be very helpful. Um, just to summarize, the county comprehensive plan, the first comprehensive plan for Orange County was adopted in 1980. It was substantially updated in 1987. Um, uh, and about the time I was uh, came to take this position, uh, a, a full rewrite of the plan was uh, adopted by the county legislature in 2003 and further revised uh, in 2004 and 2010. Um, uh, this plan is written, the, the one document would supersede those earlier plans. So we're proposing to basically replace the earlier plan the plan now, uh, the 2003 plan updated twice in 04 and 10 uh, with a new plan. Um, the plan has also been amended through an approach of a series of adoptions of supplemental chapters, uh, an open space plan. Uh, we did a greenway plan in support of the Hudson River Greenway. Um, we did an agriculture and farmland protection plan. We did a water master plan to look at water needs in the county. Uh, those supplemental chapters of totaling five happened between uh, 2004 and 2015. Um, and they're briefly described in the introduction of the draft. It's being considered now. So this proposal replaces that, uh, uh, what was referred to as strategies for quality com uh, communities comprehensive plan um, uh, and supplements it uh, and re while retaining the five supplemental chapters so we're not proposing any changes to those. Um, and adding a new supplemental chapter specific to transportation. Um, a summary of how you can get a hold is on the board 
uh, behind us here. Um, we also, uh, I brought along two primary maps. Uh, one map shows the open spaces and recreational lands in the county um, that are kind of anchor facilities. The primary foundational principle of the county plan uh, that was initiated uh, in the in the original 1980, uh, Harry, you're the historian, you might have been there then. Uh, that, yeah, the urban rural concept, right? Yes. Where the county, and in very simple terms, the county was split into an urban and a rural area, and uh, the county's policies and investments were treated distinctly depending on whether you were rural, urban or, or, or rural. We uh, morphed that or changed that with the adoption in the uh, the subsequent ones into what we call priority growth areas. And that map, which is being amended and updated, is the yellow with purple in the back, which identifies uh, areas in purple that are what we call priority growth areas. Um, places that have infrastructure, sewer water, adequate roads, um, uh, complementary zoning for uh, more intense development or mixed use development. Um, and the remainder are uh, what we call uh, environmental sensitive lands, uh, the rural portions of the counties. Um, we have included in the priority growth area now um, some key crossroads uh, transit locations, uh, uh, neighborhoods of the railroad stations, for example, um, primary bus hubs, uh, and all the hamlets in the county, as well as villages and city incorporated areas, so hamlets being unincorporated villages. So that, that's a summary of where we're at today. Thank you, Commissioner Church. <clears throat> At this time, I would like to uh, invite Acting County Executive Harry Four to the microphone. Thank you, Mr. Pagione. Welcome, everyone, to Orange County's other county seat. As we all know, Orange County has two county seats, and uh, you are now sitting in, in the other one. Uh, as a matter of fact, as we all know, I'll, I'll repeat it, I know everyone's aware of this, but from 1798 until 1980, uh, county government, county courts were conducted in the Newburgh just as it's conducted in, in Orange County and in Goshen right now. Uh, another sort of historical footnote, back when the original county government uh, allocated monies for the development of a courthouse in Goshen, they gave Goshen $17,000. Next year they allocated money for the construction of a courthouse in the other county seat, city of Newburgh, and they gave them $14,000. So Newburgh was sure changed even back then. But anyway, <laughs> just, just a, a footnote. But um, really, uh, I, I thank you all for being here today. This is a very important issue. Uh, County Executive Newhouse would be here, but he's in Kurdistan. So uh, he's unable to join us as well today. Um, I wanted to really just speak uh, quickly about uh, the appreciation that we have for our staff, uh, Dave Church, our commissioner, Megan Teneman, New Newburgh School graduate, a uh, planner working on this program. And uh, we really appreciate your professionalism, your expertise, the hard work that you've done to put this together, and the work that you do every day. I'd also like to point out that Elaine McClung is in the audience. She is serving as a volunteer, citizen volunteer, on the Orange County Planning Board as its chairman right now. And she and the others that were appointed by the county executive, confirmed by the county legislature, have done a wonderful job. And I know Stu Turner, who actually we've appointed and uh, is in front of you at your next meeting for confirmation, uh, is a professional in the planning area and will be a wonderful addition uh, to the Orange County Planning Board. So um, just uh, on a comment, uh, last century when I uh, was uh, city manager of Newburgh, uh, and then Congressman Maurice Sinchi and I worked together on uh, developing uh, improvements for the area. And of course, transportation is one of the most important improvements that you can make. And we developed a concept, and we tried to sell it, we tried to get money to study it, was the idea of a rail link from uh, Stewart Airport to Grand Central in New York, New York City. And we think it's vital for the uh, developed, targeted growth of the county and Stewart Airport going forward. So I would ask that Elaine and Dave, as you're doing work on the finalization of the comprehensive plan, that you consider the idea of having a study uh, promoted for the development of a rail link of some type or people mover as uh, is more commonly referred to these days from Stewart Airport right down 17K Broadway, right around the corner here, up the block and across the Newburgh Beacon Bridge to the Beacon train station. That would give you a one seat uh, a ride from Stewart Airport into uh, New York City. And people really do want to go down the Hudson Line more than they want to go down the, the Jersey Transit Line on the West Coast. 
west side of the uh, river. So I, I would ask that you consider that also, and Stu, uh, you're very familiar with all this, uh, if you can include those thoughts in your uh, completion of your plan. Thank you all, thank you for what you do, and thank you legislators for coming to uh, this historic city of Newburgh. Thank you, Acting County Executive Board. We will now hear from the public. Each person will have three minutes to speak. We have three people signed up for public comment. At this time, we invite Michelle McKeon to the microphone. Oh, I just thought I was signing in. Okay. I'll, I'll come talk, but I really thought you were going to sign in. Sorry. Because <laughs> I don't follow directions really well. Good afternoon. My name is Michelle McKeown. I'm the Chief Operating Officer for Recap. My CEO, Charlie Quinn, is in the back and more happy when I speak than he has to speak. Um, and we represent the uh, community not only in the city of Newburgh, but throughout the county. And one of the things, we have to do a comprehensive plan or needs assessment every three years. And every three years, the same issues continue to come up, and it's transportation. So as you look at this plan, I would really like you to also consider those who don't have cars, those who cars are too expensive, even if they have them, to maintain or to insure or to put gas in. Um, I teach at the Mount, and each semester I have my students, I teach a variety of courses, but my social class, power and inequality class, I make them. Um, do a transportation walk through the city of Newburgh and their task is they must start at the city of Newburgh and get to Goshen and then come back and they are to document their travel. Um, it's cost, it's time, it's convenient um, and I give them scenarios. You have to be in family court, you have to go to your job. Um, each one of them come back with what a nightmare our transportation is. Um, and these are kids with means. Um, they don't necessarily have to worry about the cost of the transportation. They just have to figure out the transportation. It is not easy. So um, when you are thinking about these things, think about literacy rates, think about English and other languages. Think about the challenges you may face if you didn't have money, if you didn't have time, if you didn't have childcare, if you didn't have housing. All of those things contribute to the social determinants of health and create a healthy community, which is our mission, which is your mission. And we really, really thank you for including us in this process and making sure that the, the public has a voice um, in doing transportation. So enjoy your afternoon. Thank you. We have others signed up who would like to give comment. At this time, we invite Margaret Sanchez to the microphone, please. Good afternoon. I never. I never made a comment before, but this I am going to make a comment. I live right here in the city of Newburgh. I take mass transit because I can't afford a car. There are two buses right now that have stairs. I can't get on. I can't get on. I can't make it up those stairs. There are two ladies here who are old, who have bad knees. They can't get on those stairs either. They will not pull those buses off the line. They, they refuse. Even if I call, they tell me, use the wheelchair lift. Well, guess what? I'm not in a wheelchair. It's illegal for me to get on the wheelchair lift because the bus driver won't help me. They'll get in trouble if they try to help me. So those two buses have to get off. They have to get out. Um, there, there are a lot of people that take these buses. They have to get to the doctor's appointments. They have to get to work. They have to go grocery shopping. They have women with baby carriages. They can't get up those stairs. A woman fell down the stairs in New York City and killed herself because of she was holding a baby carriage. There was no elevator. So we need these buses updated. Um, and please, if we could have weekend service to Beacon so that I can get down to see my family in New York City. Otherwise, I'm stuck going down Friday and coming back Monday, and I'm an overnight guest. That overstayed their welcome. <laughs> and they're trying to kick me out. But I can't, how am I going to get across? Walk? I've done it. I've done it. I walked from the Bacon train station on a Saturday, coming back over the Newburgh Beacon Bridge, and all the way back to Grand Street. Because there's, n I can't afford a, U a Uber, whatever. It's $30. That's $30 just across the bridge. So if we could have that, that's it. So I'm, I'm a transit rider. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next on our list is Kippy Boyle.
Thank you. Uh, I'm actually up here on behalf of Mary Ann Marico, who could not be here today. She's at work, but she asked me to read this for her. Uh, my name is Mary Ann Marico, and I live in downtown Newburgh and have been here for 10 years. I rely on public transportation in all forms to get to and from work, primarily, and for other needs as well, five to six days a week. I currently have several jobs, one of which is at Adams Ferryker Farm in Newburgh. Two others are coaching jobs in, the New York, in New York City. I ride the local bus to from Adams and take the Newburgh Beacon Airport shuttle to from the Beacon train. The schedule is very limited. Locally, there is no service Monday through Saturday after 7 p.m. My last bus is 6.40 p.m., thus limiting the time I'm able to work in the evenings. There is absolutely no Sunday service. Because of this, I have to take $12 round-trip cabs, which are unreliable at best. My job in New York City requires me to be there in the mid to late afternoon. The last bus to the Beacon train station is at 9.35 in the morning. Service doesn't resume until late afternoon. Because of unreliable experiences taking a cab, once again, I'm forced to take Uber or Lyft at approximately $24 round trip. Uh, the return trip is also an issue because the bus leaving Beacon is 9.20 p.m. and I often return after that. Uh, re repeat, there is no service provided on the weekends. I also have to comment that most regular bus riders do not get on at the current bus terminal or park and ride. It simply is not convenient for most of us as you need transportation to get there to, and it makes it unrealistic to walk. I am asking you to please consider extending bus service both locally in Newburgh and with a Newburgh Bo uh, Beacon Airport shuttle. Um, I would gladly pay more for both services. I might add that the newer coach buses added to the Newburgh Beacon shuttle should be promoted because it is a resource that many are aware of. Thank you. Next we have uh, Gabriel Berlin from the city of Newburgh. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Gabriel Berlin. Uh, I live in the city of Newburgh. Lived up here for about five years. Uh, I am chairman of the recently revitalized um, City of Newburgh Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, we have been in existence for about six months. We meet about once a month. Um, our, we mainly view ourselves as uh, a way to communicate with the community and be a go between between the city government, elected officials, and the public. Um, the main things we've done so far are doing outreach to the community, trying to hear the community's needs, uh, and also trying to um, get information out to the community from city government. Um, some of the main things we've focused on so far are getting a complete streets policy adopted for the city of Newburgh. Um, and like I said, we spent a lot of time on community outreach and hearing the needs. Um, when we started this, uh, I, we all had a lot of ideas about things we'd we'd attempt to get done, and uh, we realized we had uh, we needed to focus. Um, I really had, had dreams of painting crosswalks on every intersection and paving all the roads, um, but after talking to the public, I quickly realized that um, seemingly by far the number one issue is public transit, and in Newburgh, that's the buses. Um, the, th the thing about public transit in Newburgh is that it affects everything. Economy, commerce, jobs, tourism, <coughs> environmental uh, improvements, and health. And um, as we all know, Newburgh suffers disproportionately from poverty, from unemployment, and a bus system, a public transit system, is something that directly affects that. Um, building ridership of a public transit system takes time. Uh, it's easier to lose riders than it is to gain riders. And one of the number one complaints has just been reliability. Um, sometimes the bus won't show up, the schedule isn't reliable, the route will change due to construction, but they won't tell you, so then you're sitting out there. Um, people who are, um, like I said, um, unemployment is a big problem in Newburgh, and there are people who have actually managed to get a job, but they rely on the bus to get there. If the bus doesn't come one time, they miss it, 
they're fired, and that goes on their record. So not only do they lose the job they had, it's harder for them to get a job in the future. So like I said, it's harder to build a ridership than it is to lose a ridership. Uh, lose ridership. And if we can increase reliability, uh, we'll go a long way. The network is there, the buses are there, the stops are there, um, the need is there, the demand is there. We just need to improve the network we have. Um, I think that was mainly it. Um, I've already seen a lot of improvement. Um, we even, uh, the schedules got put up. Um, the uh, bus shelters have been improved, so there's been some improvements that have already been happening. And I think the third part of that is uh, just increasing service, increasing reliability. Uh, we've been doing kind of some informal surveys of the public, and by far the two biggest requests are uh, Sunday service and service after 7 p.m. Um, almost everyone I talk to takes the bus to work, but they can't take it home because it doesn't run past 7 p.m. So if we have a later bus service, more people can take the bus home from work rather than having to uh, ride a taxi. Um, I also have uh, the surveys some people have filled out, so I can give those to wherever the... Do you think copies? Uh, I have, no, I haven't printed out one. We appreciate it. Thank you. Just with the statement that Next on the list from Newburgh, we have Rose Scott Road. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. This actually has come quite as a surprise to me because um, a few days ago I was handed a survey about transportation in the city, and then uh, on Monday at City Council meeting it was mentioned, and I thought this issue, you know, this a meeting is going to be purely about transportation within within the city of Newburgh. There are some things that I've noted because I walk around the city and there are a lot of things that are, are, are fairly hard not you know not to miss, like the makeup of this board, and even the uh, you know you know there are a lot of people that live within three or four blocks of this particular location that aren't here, and I think as a board you're making plans in one way, but it's disconnected from the, um, from the majority city politic um, that, that, that walk, walks around here. Um, you know, but, and I've lived in other cities and I can see how, you know, I know how, how vital transportation is. If you want this place, if you want the city to be a major tourist hub, then you've got to be able to provide for it. You've got people that fly all over the world. They come, I see them flying you know, into Stewart Airport, you know, Newburgh can be a great river town, sort of like New Orleans, but you've got to think and plan for it. And what I see on the ground right now, running around on Broadway, is very, very far from it, okay? Every business, and I've lived in other cities, every business, you know, you put your, you know, you put your advertising up and, you know, so reached by West Cross Route, or that bus has a service number. There's nothing like that here. You know, everything is concentrated down at the river. You know, you've got all of these businesses up here, you know, up on Liberty Street and Broadway. Broadway used to mean something, so I'm told. When I look at the pictures of Barnes and Nobles, it used to mean something. And in order for it to get that way, one has to think that way. And, you know, you, you know as a board, you've got a lot of work to do. Um, you know, the demographics of this county are changing. You know, I used to work in Woodbury Commons. I know that as, a, as an entity, that small patch of real estate is responsible for over half of this co uh, county's tax base, but I see everyone running down from here, going down to New York City like ticks in the morning. I wasn't prepared to give this speech, but you know what? You know, if it hurts people's feelings, you know, you know that's called progress. Progress. And I vote too, you know. Um, you've got buses, you know. You've got buses on the half-hour schedule. For me, I already know what's out. You know, I know what's out there. I know leprechaun lines. I know short lines. I know how how to work those schedules. But you have other people that they they really don't know. And and 
you know, as a process, you know, and it depends on how much attention you place into it, you know, you're actually doing yourself, discounting this region more harm than good. Just so you know. Thank you. Next we have Caitlin O'Brien from West Cal. I don't know if I'm tall enough for this, but I'll try. Um, <laughs> I uh, work for the Orange County Department of Health here in Newburgh for Community Health Outreach, and I'm in charge of our Health Disparities Initiative, which is a grant focused specifically on the city of Newburgh. Um, part of that grant focused on doing listening sessions with the community about the top priority issues that <coughs> impact the health of the community. Uh, Newburgh has far worse health outcomes than Orange County in general and New York State at large. Um, and so we wanted to understand from community members what they saw as the biggest inhibitors to being more healthy. Transportation at every single session we hosted, the four over the last year, with approximately almost 200 city residents was one of the top priority issues identified each time. Um, public transportation being a big inhibitor because folks had a harder time accessing health appointments, accessing healthy foods. Um, Newburgh is considered a food uh, <laughs> desert here, so folks being able to access healthy foods at places other than bodegas where healthy foods are very expensive, um, that was a huge inhibitor. Additionally, just the walkability of the city. So if you've ever tried to take a walk around Newburgh, it's not always the easiest. The sidewalks are in huge disrepair. Um, so that being another po component of transportation that people can't even walk to where they need to go um, being an issue crosswalks dangerous places to cross I work right on Broadway So everyone knows <laughs> who works in that area just getting across Broadway is a real challenge Safely without feeling like you're in a game of Frogger um, So I think those things are really important to note because it's not just a perceived thing But that the people living here over and over identify that being a top issue I don't live in the city of Newburgh, but I work here, and I do think that you know there's great strength here. There's people doing wonderful things, but they need to be able to get where they need to go, um, to be able to access healthy foods, health appointments, all of those things. Um, and I also think it's just important to note as well, um, just from the health department perspective, and I know this is Newburgh focused, um, but that Port Jervis being another priority area for us is somewhere that's incredibly isolated, um, and I know that hearing the voices of folks in that community would be important as well. So, thank you. Thank you. Next we have, and excuse me, I, I don't know if I can read that, Barbara Hanley from Monroe. Okay, okay thank you. We'll continue, next on our list is Caitlin Cordero from Newburgh. Okay. And last, and I apologize, I, I can't really read the handwriting here. Harvey, if I say Michael Gibson. I'm sorry, Michael Gabor from the city of New York. Sorry, sir. Michael Gabor. No, that's fine. Yeah, it's my handwriting is horrible. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to, um, I, I'm glad that we're having this discussion because, you know, a lot of what people have said, I just signed up just now to, to talk. Um, but one of the things that, that, that I do, we, we, I was um, the first, one of the first ones in, in Newburgh to uh, start something called Airbnb. We have an Airbnb room in our, in our property. Um, and we have people from all over the world um, come and stay in our room. Uh, right here on Grand Street, Newburgh. Um, and one of the challenges that I've seen is it's not really, you know, yes, it's necessary for the community at large, but it's also necessary uh, to have people come here from outside, which is what we depend on. Uh, I have a business also, Newburgh Art Supply, over here on Grand Street, um, and we depend on people coming from the outside of Newburgh to keep our business in business because we couldn't depend primarily on the people in the city of Newburgh. Um, and Part of that challenge is the idea that there is no way for people to get here or to leave. You know, it's kind of, you know, we're kind of in this vacuum, and it's it's a challenge to have a business here, which I would think that small businesses would be a priority, um, uh, and, and and there is such a high concentration of them here. Uh, the other things I hear, my, my my partner is a teacher here at Orange County Community College. I hear that there's very challenging transportation in between the two campuses, um, and I also hear from. Um, you know, people that want to get to Goshen to go to the courts, there's also a real uh, challenge of getting there. And, and you know, recently I, I read about how there's this development for some kind of toy Lego land or something uh, that's going on in our county. And there seems to be a lot of concentration on, on what is going to be developed, the transportation to get to that. But what, what, we, what we need to take care of is what's already here. We have a, a, a high population that is not getting transported. 
uh, properly. But not only that, but this is the, the future of, of transportation is public transportation. You know, we can't be depending on cars. We have to be, uh, you know, I, I appreciate Newburgh because I can walk to a lot of what I need. Um, and, I, and I appreciate that. Even though I can't afford to have a car and I do have a car, I would rather walk or bike to where I need to go. And I think that that needs to be addressed. The last thing I want to address, obviously, is, is the, um, and something that's been a priority of mine for, I've been here for 30 years and I just, I couldn't believe it when I first discovered this, but the, the uh, bus terminal um, used to be where McDonald's is here in the city of Newburgh, um, you know, where it was access, uh, walkably accessible to everyone in the city of Newburgh. Now, the bus terminal is two miles outside of our city. It is on a road that has no sidewalks or, and it's very dangerous walk if anyone even attempts to do it. And I think that um, a priority needs to be that we need to get that bus terminal back into the city of Newburgh. Um, and, and not only for the people that need to get to work and, and need to get to shop, but also for people that are possibly coming from the airport or people coming from the outside. You look at New Paltz, a much smaller town than what we have here, and their bus terminal is right in the middle of town. You look at Kingston, their bus terminal is right in the middle of town. You know, this is really something that needs to be addressed. And if, if you're going to talk about a comprehensive plan, you know, this is ac actually affecting the whole county. Um, you know, most of the population, you know, uh, sits, you know, in this area and in Middletown. And, and Goshen is sort of like, it's very spread out. Um, and there is no connection to the county seat to either of these communities uh, through public transportation. And, and that really needs to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have John Rousseau. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. I'm John Lusson. I live here in Newburgh. Um, I was born here. Uh, I just want to say that's basically what I wanted to say. I walk all over town. The bus system is not very uh, helpful. The ferry boat is only for 250 people a day who are using the train at a limited uh, schedule. And we just don't have the, the transportation that we need to make Newburgh go forward economically, which is what made Newburgh what it is, is the transportation system when we had the trains. And uh, we've lost all that, and we should be bringing it back. But thank you. Thank you. And that is all that we have signed up for public comment in this uh, portion. This is session one of this public hearing. And just for some housekeeping, we will continue. We will have a second session of this public hearing, and that will be Wednesday, March 20th, 2019, at 5 p.m. in the Legislative Chambers. And that is located at 255 Main Street in Goshen. Uh, any public, any member of the public who has not participated today is welcome to come and either uh, speak to for three minutes or submit written uh, statement. And we will have that again. It will be Wednesday, March 20th, at 5 p.m. in the Legislative Chambers. I just want to thank everyone for coming out this afternoon. And, uh, thank you. And uh, with that being said, if anyone hasn't signed up yet and would like to make a statement, you do have a three minute window. And uh, please come up to the microphone, state your name and your residency, your, your town or village or city you live in, and you'll have three minutes. Sir, please come on up. Uh, Chris Hansen. I live in the city of Newburgh. I'm a broker here. Um, I love a lot of the comments that were said already. I would just add to the train schedule. Um, a lot of people living in this region and in the city of Newburgh uh, work in the entertainment industry, film and television, and are not nine to fivers. Um, and that's a big complaint with people moving into the area that I, I'm not sure if they're on people's radar or not. Maybe they're just if it's kind of the default to think nine to five transportation. But I would say a very large percentage of what is here in commuting to the city is not nine to five. So they end up having to drive in. Um, and in Newburgh's case, these comparisons that get made between Newburgh and Beacon, which are uh, often not that valid, but it's certainly a perception of the ease of getting in and out of the city from the two places, and I think Newburgh comes out on the losing side of that, uh, certainly from a perception standpoint, but from a reality standpoint in terms of how often the ferry runs, 
which is, does not coincide with how often the train runs and the occupations of the people here. So you know, just consider that. Thank you. Thank you. And if anyone else has any comments, not, not seeing any, I will just, uh, I will adjourn this portion of, uh, like I said, it's session one, uh, a two-part session of this public hearing. I'll adjourn it, and you guys are all welcome to join us again Wednesday, March 20th, 2019, at 5 p.m. in the Legislative Chambers in Goshen, New York. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.